compute the Laplace transform of the function f of t equals 2 on the interval from 1 to 2, including 1, and then 0 elsewhere. We're going to get our answer in two ways. First way, using the definition of Laplace transform, and then we're going to check our work by using the second shift formula. Now, using the definition of Laplace transform, so we're going to do. Here's the picture of our graph. So you'll notice it's going to be 0 everywhere except in the interval from 1 to 2. And there, it's going to be equal to 2. Laplace transform of f. OK, that's going to give us back a function in terms of s. We define as in proper integral from 0 to infinity f of t, e to the minus st dt. So we're integrating with respect to t. We're going to treat the s as a constant when we integrate. Now, when I multiply by e to the minus st, Okay, you'll note, wherever we're 0, we're going to stay 0. So our range of integration is really going to be from 1 to 2. Okay, we're going to be 0 everywhere else. So when we put in our f of t, from 1 to 2, the function is going to be equal to 2. Then we have our e to the minus st. So we integrate. Any derivative of 2 e to the minus st is going to be equal to minus 2 over s, e to the minus st. Then we evaluate at 1 and 2, take the difference. So when we're done, okay, I'll clear up this minus sign here by pushing it through. We have 2 over s, e to the minus s, minus e to the minus 2s. So it's going to be our answer that we'll check later. Now, we have the second shift formula. So before we state that, let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need. The main tool is going to be the unit step function, also called the heavy side function. So this is going to be defined as, so u of t equals, on negative t, it's going to be 0. For non-negative t, it's going to be equal to 1. So what does this function do for us? Well, suppose I have a function f of t defined on the real line. And I just want to set all of my values for negative t equal to 0 all in one shot. The way we do that is to take f of t, multiply by ut. So what happens there? If I'm at negative t, we're multiplying by 0. So that'll set all of our values corresponding to negative t equal to 0. If we're at positive t or at 0, we're just multiplying by a 1, so we leave everything unchanged. So in some sense, all we're doing here is taking our function at 0, chopping it off, and then setting everything equal to 0. OK. Now, we're not interested in just chopping things off at 0. We're going to want to be able to chop off at any a that we like. So the way we do that is just by taking our unit step function, then replacing t with t minus a. Now, we have a composition here. So for the thing on the inside, remember, you do the opposite of what you would think. So if I have t minus a, that means we're going to take the graph, shift to the right by a. So our function here is going to look like this. So I'll have 0 when we're less than a. We'll have 1 when we're greater than or equal to a. Now, these functions are going to be really useful for a few situations. So as I already noted before, if you want to chop off parts of functions, they're going to be the tool that you use. If you want to play around with piecewise defined functions with the Laplace transform, you're going to also want to use these. They make computations much simpler than if you try to do things like we did here. Okay, although this isn't bad, we'll see some examples later on where they do get bad. Now, second shift formula. So here, we start with our f of t, multiply by ut, and then we shift everything to the right by a. We apply the Laplace transform. What comes out is going to be the Laplace transform of our original function times e to the minus sa. Now, in terms of the picture, what are we doing? If we have the graph of f of t. OK, well, what do we want to do? We're going to multiply by the unit step function shift everything to the right by a. So you can see, going from here to here, the shift everything to the right by a. What the unit step function does, if there's any part of your graph of f that's extended into the region where t is less than 0, unit step function is getting rid of that. So if we're less than a or greater than 0, unit step function says set it equal to 0. OK. Now, if we want to get good with the second shift formula, 
We want to get good at manipulating these shifted unit step functions. So in our case here, not going to be too complicated, but we want to work with more complicated examples later on. So that's what's coming up. Now, for here, what are we looking at? I have f of t equal to 2 between 1 and 2, and then 0 elsewhere. So the idea is we just want to write this as sum or difference of shifted unit step functions. So what do we have here? Well, if you note, what do we have? Between 1 and 2, we're at 2. I want 0 to the left, 0 to the right. To get 0 to the left is easy. I just start with my unit step function shifted by 1. Then that's going to give me, OK, we start at 1, and then we'll have value 2 as I go all the way off to the right. And that's assuming I multiply by 2 first. Now, I want to get rid of everything on the other side of 2, going all the way off to the right. So the way you visualize this, just draw the picture of everything you want to get rid of. OK, in this case, it's going to be this picture here. What's this? This is going to be two times okay, our unit step function shifted by 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract that off. And then if you check what's happening, okay, you'll see that's going to give us our original function. Now, we'd rather work with this than our function written like this. So let's work out our Laplace transform. So we follow our nose, Laplace transform of f of t. It's going to be equal to twice, okay, shifted unit step function, minus 2 shifted unit step function. Okay, we can use linearity to pull this apart and then factor out the 2s. Then what are we left with? Well, next question you have to ask is, what am I going to use for an f? In this case, you're going to use f equal to 1. And then it doesn't matter what you shift it by. Okay, if I take a constant function, shift, I always get the same constant function back. So the idea is going to be, we're just going to take our second shift formula, apply it to f equal to 1. So what happens here? Well, we take our original function, so it's going to be Laplace transform of 1. We correct by e to the minus a s. Here a is equal to 1, so I get e to the minus s. Then same idea over here, Laplace transform of 1. And then we have e to the minus a s, where a is equal to 2. So I get e to the minus 2 s. Then Laplace transform of 1 is going to be equal to 1 over s. So when I collect things together, you notice this is going to check our work from the first board. Now, let's see where our second shift formula comes from. So the idea is we just follow our nose. I route the definition. So I route the definition of Laplace transform with okay, this term in here as our function. Now, first thing I'm going to do is we would normally start with t equal to 0. But since I'm using the shifted unit step function, we're going to be set to 0 until we get up to a. So I'm going to start our integration off at t equal to a. Then we're going to do a change of variables. So the idea is I want to get rid of these minus a's inside of our functions. I do that by letting t prime be equal to t plus a. dt prime is going to be equal to dt. So when we do our change of variable, what happens? We'll be left with Okay, t prime goes from 0 to infinity. We have ut prime, ft prime, e to the minus s, t prime plus a in parentheses, dt prime. All right, let's pull this apart. First thing I can do, I can factor out e to the minus s a. Okay, there's no t in there, so that comes out in front. Then u of t prime. If we're looking at the range where we're bigger than 0, that's always equal to 1. So it's like it's not there. So what are we left with? If you note, well, this is just going to be the Laplace transform of f, except we're in terms of t prime instead of t. That's not a problem. We're doing integration. Okay, What we integrate with respect to is always a dummy variable. So we can change that back to t with no penalty. So what comes out is going to be e to the minus sa, Laplace transform of f of t. And that's our second shift formula.